think we'll give a couple people a couple minutes to join and then we'll try to get started. I'm so excited you're all here. I just have my little kit set up. I'm gonna take a picture of it. These eyeballs are intense. Okay, so we'll give people like two minutes to come on and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to try to figure out, too, how you'll be able to see my little screen. Okay. All right. Perfect. Take a nice picture of all this. All right, everyone. Okay. All right, so we gave everybody two minutes. No one else seems to be joining, which is totally fine. We have a great group here right now. Um, I just wanna give everyone a chance. So um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. And then if you wanna introduce yourselves, that's awesome. And then we can kind of go ahead and work through this together step-by-step. So, um, my name is Amelia McCary. I am a um, resident doctor at Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I'm in the triple board program, which is pediatrics, psychiatry, and child psychiatry combined. Um, for undergrad, I majored in English and micromolecular biology. Um, so, and then I went to med school at Geisinger Commonwealth in Scranton, and I did the ELC tutoring program there starting in uh, med school. So I've been with ELC for quite a while now. I love it. It's an awesome resource for people in Scranton. So I'm really excited that all of you are taking advantage of it. Um, if any of you are interested in medical school or um, any kind of like healthcare career, uh, please let me know and I'd be happy to talk with you uh, during the class or after the class. Um, and then if anyone is interested in like English or how to incorporate like that kind of background into different career paths, let me know about that as well. Because um, I think a lot of times you think like, oh, if I'm doing healthcare, I need to do only science and college and stuff like that. And there's really a lot of different ways that you can go about it. So. I think that's exciting. Hmm, let's figure out how we can get you to see my little thing. So does everyone wanna introduce themselves and just say if you're on the chat and maybe you could say like something you're interested in. Oh, look at two more people are joining. Let's see if they're in. Okay, so if everyone maybe, who do we have on here? Um, Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay. Um, we're all doing pretty good. We're actually outside right right now, so if you hear like like trees in the background all, stuff, if you hear outside noises, it's because we're outside. Yeah. yeah. 
That is totally fine. If you want to, uh, yeah, if you want to mute yourselves, that's totally fine. And then when you want to ask questions or anything, if you want to unmute, that's perfect. Um, okay, so I guess you can go ahead and I'll, I'll call your name and you can introduce yourself and just say like maybe something you're thinking about for after high school. Um, whether that's like a career or going to college or anything like that, okay? So we'll start with um, Alexis. And if Hi, I'm Alexis. Alexis. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> That's totally fine. We're excited to have you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ava. If you don't have anything you want to say, that's also totally fine. Um, Cabre. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Cabre, and I'm a senior at West Granton High School. Oh, awesome. And next year, I'm going to the Univers University of Scranton, and I'm studying biology. Yay! That's awesome. The U is amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. That's really, really exciting. My dad went to West Granton. And the U. <laughs> oh, okay. really? Yeah. That's, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, John J. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all here. Jay's with uh, with uh, me. Jay or Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, uh, what, was, what did you want us to say, <laughs> say again? I guess you could just say like where, what grade you are in school now and what you're thinking about doing after high school. Okay. Uh, I'm a junior and I was thinking about becoming a physician's assistant. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. And um, I'm Jaw. I'm in 10th grade and I was thinking about either becoming a physician assistant or a actor. Oh my goodness. Very cool. All right. So we have a lot of cool plans here. I like that. Uh, yeah. um, Kira. My name is Kira. I'm a junior at Shenandoah Valley, and I'm interested in going to the medical field. Yay! Awesome. Okay, great. A lot of a lot of future healthcare workers here. And Nina. Hi, I'm Nina. Um, I'm a junior at Wampawpak Area High School, and I plan to be a pediatric gastroenterologist. Oh my goodness! All right, awesome. Well, pediatrics is the best. GI is also awesome. Um, so that's a great, great field. That's exciting. Okay, everybody. So do you all have your kits? Yeah, Ja and Jay had the right idea doing this outside. I was actually thinking about that too. Are people wearing gloves or no? I was thinking about wearing gloves, but I didn't end up bringing any. And then I also didn't know if you would all have gloves, so I didn't want to wear them if you didn't have them. <laughs> so, but if you do have gloves, you can wear your gloves. Um, but this is okay to touch with your hands. Meh. I think it's okay. Does anyone have gloves? I do. I'm actually gonna go grab some real quick. Okay, so let's give everybody, if you have gloves at your house, I'll give you two, sec two minutes to run and grab them. Um, and then we'll meet back here. I will be right back. Um, do we, we, we need gloves because we, we don't have any. No, if you don't have them, you don't need them. Um, right. but if you do have them, you can wear them, but I will say this, if you're not wearing them, make sure you don't touch your eyes. Okay. And, and make sure we do the dissection. Don't touch your eyes and then wash your hands before you touch your eyes. Okay. All right. But yeah, you don't need them. I won't wear them if there are some people who are not wearing them. Um, okay. All right. Exciting. So I actually didn't even open my little bag yet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the bag. Did everyone open their eyeball out of the bag? I'm opening mine now. You can use the little scissors that came in your kit, and you can just go ahead and cut, like. OK, there we go. Oh my goodness, this thing is very, very large. Whoa. OK. All right, have any of you done anatomy yet? Where like you actually, where you dissect things in school? 
This is pretty exciting that we're getting to do this. Okay, awesome. Then what do we have here? Okay, and we have our scalpel. So if you want to go ahead and open your scalpel now as well, so you just open this top piece and just slide it open gently and then reach in and pull out the handle. Okay, great. And it's still sealed. Um, all right, so we can keep it sealed for now. This is good. And then when you do throw these out at the end of the session, you can go ahead and cover the lid back up and then throw it out that way so it won't scratch anyone when it's in your garbage, okay? All righty. So let's just kind of go ahead and we'll move through this. Um, if you have any um, questions. Can you talk a, a little louder? Like louder, little sure. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and move through this step by step, starting with observing the external anatomy, okay? And then, um, can you hear me now? If you, have, if you can't hear me or if you have any issues like that, just go ahead and let me know. And then um, if you have any questions, you can either type in the chat or just start talking. Um, whatever is easier for you, okay? All righty. And I don't know, my, I don't know if I even said my name. My name's Amelia McCary. <laughs> so you can just say Amelia. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so the cow eyeball is very similar to the human eye, which is pretty cool that we're doing this dissection. Um, so we're going to dissect the anatomy of this eye and kind of relate it to our own eye. Um, and then just some things to talk about safety-wise. We already talked about don't touch your eyes when we're doing this dissection. And also, like, don't touch your mouth or any, if you have any cuts or anything like that, don't touch that. And then make sure when we're done, you go ahead and wash your hands really thoroughly. Um, and if you do have any, any cuts, it would be good if you wear gloves. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we have. We have our cow eyeball, we have our little scalpel, we have our scissors, um, we have our tray, we have the, the bag that it came in, we can use as a garbage bag, um, or you can use like another, any other bag at home. Um, and that's probably all we need for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and start by looking at the eye. So the parts of the eye, does anyone know what the black part of your eye is called? Like the part in the very center. That is called your pupil. And so that reacts to light. So when there's more light, it might uh, get bigger or smaller, depending. Um, and that is a sign that your eyes are working. Like in someone who's in a coma or unresponsive, you can shine a light in their eye and their pupils will not constrict or get bigger. They won't change size. And that's how you know like, oh gosh, there's an issue with their brainstem because they're not responding to light. Okay, some other things in the eye. Um, we have the iris, which is the colored part of your eye. We have the cornea, which is in front of the eye kind of shields the rest of your eye from like debris and things outside. Um, the retina stretches behind the eye and attaches to the back. So like if you picture inside your head, I wonder if I can share my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen right now? I'm gonna share this. Yeah. I'm going to share this so that I can kind of show you. Okay, so like see this little green thing and can you see my cursor? Okay, so the retina goes all the way around to the back and then here in the back of the eye is where the optic nerve is and this optic nerve goes to your brainstem. So the optic nerve controls a lot of different things. It controls like you actually seeing and then there's this blind spot in the very center does anyone, has anyone ever heard of the rods and cones? The rods and cones are back here as well. And that's how you see different colors and like depth and things like that. Then also back here in the middle of the eye. So in between where your pupil is and where your optic nerve is, there's just like space with this jelly stuff that's called vitreous humor. If something happens to your eye and this gets damaged, like that might even leak out. 
Um, and then like in front of the pupil is the aqueous humor. Um, and then the sclera is the white part of your eye. So um, like something we say, like when I'm doing a physical exam on a patient, um, you'll say like um, sclera and icteric. So icteric is when they're like yellow or jaundiced. That's something you worry about a lot in pediatric patients. Um, conjunctiva is like this part of your eye like under the lid. And so if you ever like smoke marijuana or use other kinds of drugs that can cause your conjunctiva to look injected. And that means that they're very bloodshot. So those are some things that we would look at in pediatrics when we're doing a physical exam. And you can kind of see that on your cow eyeball as well. So I guess I can pick this up and show you, but now I better stop touching my own eyes. Okay, so this part will be the lens out in the front. This will be the um, cornea around it. The sclera is more back here. Um, if you kind of like pull your cow eye a little bit, because it's probably a little bit messed up just from being in the box, can everyone see like this big thick stalk that's coming out of the back of the eye? That's the optic nerve, okay? And then this, all this like stuff is just like the fat and muscle that like keeps the eyeball in place in the head, okay? Okay, I'm gonna get some paper towels. Okay, awesome. So now how do I stop? Okay, so now I'm not sharing my screen anymore because I will just show you my little, um... oh, where did that go? Okay, awesome. So that's kind of the anatomy of the eye. Does anyone have any questions on the anatomy? All right, so first thing we wanna do is kind of look at our eyeball and see what we can identify. So if everyone wants to kind of pick up the eyeball and get comfortable with it, that's great. So as you're looking at it, see what you can see. So you should be able to spot the white part of the eye. That's the sclera, like we were just talking about. So this is like around here, around the outside. That's the sclera and you know where that is in your own eye, that's the white part. Um, the fat and muscle we already identified. So this covering in the front of the eye is the cornea. So that's why, um, have you ever heard of a corneal abrasion? Like if you were to scratch your eye with something, you feel like, oh my gosh, like my eye is really in pain. I feel like something got in there and scratched it, like maybe a piece of wood or a bug or pollen or something like that. The cornea is really sensitive, and if you scratch it, it will kind of like irritate the inside of your eyelid. So that's why you you might have a corneal abrasion. Um, so now that this cow, this cornea is like more whitish because it's older, but if the cow were alive, this would be clear, like ours. Okay, now if we look through the cornea, you can kind of see the iris, which is the coloring of the eye, it's a little bit hard since this is pretty white, but like it is in there on the inside, like around the outside, but underneath this whitish part. Okay, and then the dark oval in the middle of the iris is the pupil, so we went over that. Okay, so now let's start to cut away the fat and muscle. So did everybody identify that optic nerve coming out of the back? So what you wanna do is kind of keep an eye on that optic nerve and start to trim away some of this fat and muscle just so you can get a better view of things. So uh, you can use your little scissors and just kind of take tiny little bites out of it. My, the cat, my eyeball is like really squished and condensed so I'm not sure like what's going on like with the optic nerve. Okay, can you, okay, so let I'm me show you. So what I would do is, if you're looking at the front of your eyeball, like where the cornea and the iris are, right. now flip it around and look at the back. And do you see, like, it kind of looks like a root coming out of the middle? You could, like, like this? Right, right there. Mm -hmm. I can't see your camera. Let's see. Where are you? It's like this piece right here. 
Yes. Oh. It like it looks like a little tail. Do you see on oh, mine yeah. like that? Uh huh. So that. So kind of just cut around that. Okay. Okay. Oh. So Thank try you. not to cut that part. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, they definitely did get a little bit. And you can, and it is a little confusing because like there are pieces that around the eye that are harder and stuff. I think that's kind of some of the, um, what's it called? Like cartilage that was kind of keeping the eye in place. Okay, so just kind of take tiny little bites with your scissors. Be careful because you don't want to nick yourself. And then as you're taking the bites, you could also kind of pull it a little. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to put mine down on my tray, but just kind of continue cutting at it. This might take you a couple minutes because these are tiny little scissors and this is actually a pretty meaty little thing. Okay, and try to stay away from the front of the eye, like stay away from where the cornea and the iris and all that stuff are, because we'll be getting there next. Huh, this is actually harder to cut than I would have thought. So in meds, in grade school, I dissected a worm. <laughs> I don't know if any of you did that in grade school. I was just talking about that with my friends. It's a funny thing to dissect because there's not much to do. <laughs> you just kind of slit it in half. And then um, in high school, we did a frog. I think maybe a pig. Um, and I know some kids in high school do like a cat. In college, I actually did not do anatomy. And then in med school, we do an actual human body. It's called a cadaver. Um, which is very cool. Okay. Yeah, this is hard to... How are people doing? Well, you probably can't unmute yourselves now that you're all doing this. Okay, if you're laying your eye on your little tray table, you could also kind of use your scalpel to cut off. Oh, someone else is coming. You can also use your scalpel to cut off a bigger chunk. So make sure when you use your scalpel, the blade is down, okay? And keep it away from your fingers. Yeah, this might be a bit easier. So you can use your scissors to just kind of do the first chunks, but then you can use your scalpel to cut off like a bigger chunk if that's helpful. We're all still cutting the the um, board, right? Yes, yeah, so you can keep it on the board. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, just, I did not realize how, um, I don't wanna say meaty, cause that sounds gross, but this thing is really meaty. <laughs> okay, good. Quick question. Yes. Um, right next to the optic nerve, there's this really hard part, and I'm not sure if I'm meant to cut it. It's, it looks like it's attached to the optic nerve, partially, and it's like really hard. Is it dark? What it's, color? It's pretty dark. Okay. So I think that that is some muscle, and I think it's okay to cut it. And then there's also on mine, there was like a piece of what I think was cartilage or maybe even skin from the outside of the eye. So that is brown around it. Say it again. There's a lot of brown around it as well. All right, let me see. I'm kind of trying to look at mine. I think 
That is all okay to cut. Okay. Yeah. The only thing to definitely not cut is optic nerve. Like, so if you're looking at the back of your eye, oh gosh, this is hard to see, but okay. So this is the optic nerve. This piece right here is a piece of muscle. I think that's the ab adductor muscle. This down here, I think is more muscle. I think this is part of the eyelid actually. Up here, this dark piece, that's also part of the eyelid. So like all this extra stuff around it is just muscle and skin. And then like there's on mine, there's this really hard part right here. I think that's even some cartilage in there. Okay, so you can cut all that stuff because that's not super important to us. We're really just trying to get into that eyeball. Good question. Yeah, so this is the way it is when you're dissecting your cadaver too. It's like in the beginning, you really just have to be very patient because it's pretty slow. And you don't wanna, just like you are all saying, like, oh, I don't wanna cut something that I don't mean to. And that's the perfect way to approach it because you can always cut more off, but once you cut it off, you can't, you can't get it back and you don't wanna not see some kind of connection or something that you were supposed to see. So I'm very impressed with how you are all being cautious and very conscientious about what kind of cuts you're making. That's a huge thing because a lot of people try to go in and just be like, oh, I did it really quickly, I'm done. And that's not actually the goal. So very impressive, everyone, good work. Okay, I'm gonna try to tip my camera down more so you can kind of see my little plate more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I see like here's just a big piece of fat. Awesome. Okay, does everyone feel like they were able to kind of trim a good bit off or do they still have a lot more that they want to trim off? I think I got I'm it. I'm still getting there. Okay, we'll keep, we'll keep cutting away at it for a little while. And try to keep all of your, um, all of your extras keep together. Don't just toss them. Um, Cause we'll throw everything away together. Sometimes once you like kind of dissect down, you can also use your fingers to like pull some of these little fat and muscle strands apart. Eyeball really is big, right? Human eyeball is not this big, but bigger than you think. Okay. Okay. Once you feel like you've gotten a good chunk of all this extra stuff off, we can kind of do some other things. Yeah, so now like mine still has some of the muscle. These are the, so in the eyelid, you have the 
levator palpebri muscles. And that makes sense, levate, levator. I don't know if any of you have taken Latin, but that sounds like lift, right? So you're lifting your eyelid and that's the muscle that does the lifting. Okay. All right, good. So now if we have this more dissected, we've taken all that extra fat off. It looks like this. So you should kind of see your optic nerve coming out of the back, this little guy. And then you should, looking at the front, it just kind of looks like it's more skinned than what it was before. So let's go ahead and do our next step. All right. Um, All right, so something else that you're allowed to cut is the sclera. So the sclera, can everyone see mine? Is this piece here. This like very thin piece covering the front of the eye. So you can, that's kind of what's holding everything in place. So now we can start to separate that a bit. So that's the thing I was talking about that we would say sclera icteric or anicteric if we think a patient is jaundiced and the eyes look yellow. Yeah, and as you're cutting away more, you see more of these extrinsic muscles of the eye and they're all just involved in moving the eye around, lifting the eyelid. Okay, awesome. All right. So now there's still sclera in front of this part of the eye. We just cut away the excess on the side. All right, so now what we can do is, okay. I think we'll follow this. We have two options. I'm gonna follow this way. All right, so we can cut the eye basically down the middle. So now that you've cut away all that excess fat, you're kind of looking at the eye and what you can do is just go ahead and like, Put, set it on the table just like I am and like basically put your scalpel towards the end of where that sclera was. Mm, no, let's do this first. If you go ahead and hold this in your hand, you can make a little horizontal cut um, across the lens. I don't know, yeah, so all right. So we can go ahead and just cut this in the middle. Some fluid might leak out at you, okay? So I just want you to be aware of that. If you don't want the fluid to leak out at you, you can make a little cut in the lens and let the fluid come out that way. And if not, you can just go ahead and cut the eyeball in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it cut in half. This might be a little bit hard. You wanna kind of puncture it here. So what we do for cutting with the scalpel, you just take tiny little cuts, keep sliding it over the same place like this. Don't cut yourself. And then you can kind of, you don't want to do like a sawing motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually have a lot more under here. Now that I just made that little slit, you can peel back more of the sclera. Good. This is difficult because you're cutting a little circle, right? Okay, so now I just was able to actually puncture it and some fluid is coming out. I don't know how any of you feel about stuff like that. It's a little bit yucky. Gonna go ahead and keep gently cutting. Wow, this is really cool, folks. 
So basically now we're cutting this very gently. We're separating the front of the eye from the back. All this stuff that you're seeing, this jelly stuff in here, does anyone remember in the beginning when we were going over anatomy and we said there's all that vitreous humor? That's what this is. All this jelly is the vitreous humor. This is really cool. Okay, kind of smells, right? Kind of yucky. Can block your nose. Oh my gosh, how awesome is this? All right, so all this in here is the vitreous humor, okay? That just keeps your eye kind of stable. So you can kind of scrape that out and just have it sitting on your little table. And now you have the back of your eye. This is really cool. Wow, feel, and you can feel how hard this is. That's really interesting. Okay, very cool. So that was the back. Okay, now you probably have some vitreous humor on the front as well. You can scrape that off or leave it, but be gentle because we don't want to mess with our lens. So just kind of get rid of whatever is excess and like kind of in your way. Okay, awesome. Now we have our front of our eye here. Okay, and so you can kind of feel this, right? This is awesome. All right, so now what you're gonna do, so now does everyone, mm, my board is getting a little bit messy. Can people see my board? I'll try to get some of my dirty stuff out of your way so you can kind of see more. Okay, so now we have our little eyeball. So now, so this was the vitreous humor, right? That we just took out of the back of the eye. So now that this is laying flat, you can make a tiny little incision across the front of the cornea. Do that same way that I told you about cutting. Just do like little tiny bites sliding away from yourself. Okay, so now did you see with those little tiny bites, some fluid is coming out of the front of the eye? Can everyone see the way it's coming out, coming out of mine? Does anyone remember what humor that was that we went over at the beginning? The humor that's in the front of the eye is called the aqueous humor. So I remember that because anterior is uh, the science way that we say front and aqueous is in the front. They both begin with A. And then vitreous is posterior in the back. Okay, so you can keep kind of gently cutting that cornea. And just let all that aqueous humor out. Again, this is a little bit yucky. All right. Okay, so we did a, a little slit in our cornea, but then what else you can do is kind of cut. Now this is hard, be gentle. You can cut in a little circle. You can cut the cornea away. Now be very gentle because I don't want you to cut yourselves and you kind of have to cut towards yourself, which is not ideal. But you can kind of cut this cornea out of the eyeball. This is tricky, so if it's not working for you, you don't have to do it. But just very gently. So once you make a little cut, then you can slide your scalpel in and cut away from yourself, okay? Slide your scalpel in and cut it away. And that's just a way to be safe and not hit yourself. Good, and I'm kind of move, working around it in a little circular motion. Be very gentle. How's everybody doing? This is really, really cool. Awesome. Oh, I have a little more. Awesome. So that's my cornea that we just removed from the front. Okay.
So place the cornea to the side on your tray, okay? Um, so now we're looking at the eye. So looking at the eye, so it's gonna kind of be hard for me to show you, but this is the iris, this dark part, okay? So we removed our cornea, so now we can see the iris. This is the lens. This big hard ball in the middle is the lens, okay? Very cool. All right, if we pick up the back of the eye, it's a little hard to see. Let me scrape out more of my aqueous humor so I could show you this a little more clearly. So if you if you look at your eye, flip your eye over and look at it from the back, you can scrape out some more of this. Oh, sorry, this is actually the vitreous humor in the back, right? You can scrape out some of this vitreous humor. Okay, so folks, this is really, really cool. So just to kind of keep track of what we've done so far, in the back of the eye, we have the vitreous humor. In the front of the eye, in between the cornea and the lens, we had the aqueous humor, okay? So now that we removed the cornea, we let out all that aqueous humor, and now here we are removing our vitreous humor a little bit more in the back. So this is very interesting. Like, have you ever heard someone say they have glaucoma or they have... Um, high blood pressure in their eyes. That's because there's a problem with allowing these humors, these fluids to get out of the eye. And so what that means is there's some kind of blockage somewhere. And so some of this is getting stuck. So now when someone says that, you'll know what they're talking about. Okay. So now that I scraped that away, you can see this a little bit better. And can you see this? Oh, I don't want this to fall on my keyboard. <laughs> so now you can see the muscles that see this little, like it almost looks like a mushroom. It's like black with lines. That's um, the ciliary body. So those allow the humors to move and they hold the lens in place, okay? So that's what allows the lens to change shape. So if someone puts uh, light in your eye, your your lens will change shape based on whether or not the ciliary body is contracting or relaxing, okay? All right, awesome. So when we're looking at our eye, when we flip it over like this, oh gosh, mine is really starting to fall now. We can see the sclera around the outside. We have removed the cornea. Um, then we have the iris, which is the dark part, and the lens, which is the hard part. Then we flip it over. We see the lens again, and we have the ciliary body, and we can see the remains of that vitreous humor. Very good. Okay, so now we can take the lens out. Kind of remove it gently. Wow, this is so cool. So we can hold the lens in our hands. When the cow was alive, this lens would have been clear and very flexible. Now that it's dead, it's pretty hard. Mine feels like a marble. Do yours feel like marbles? Um, so it kind of yellowed and became hard, but it's still possible to look through this lens and see if it magnifies objects. So if you want to go ahead and hold this up. Oh, this is really cool. Does anyone, so does anyone have a little piece of, mm, clean it off a little bit as much as you can. And then does anyone have like the instructions next to them or paper with writing on it? Because if you put this in front of the paper with writing on it and then look through it, it serves as a little magnifying glass. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. Just, if you have your instructions or the little box that this came in that says cow eyeball kit, just hold this over those words and then look over the top of it and you can see that they look way bigger. So that's the way a cow would see. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's really cool. All right. Okay, so that's probably most of what we have to do with our front of our eye. Now let's look at the back. Remember this piece, the hard part? Oh, okay. I kind of removed most of mine actually when I took out my vitreous humor, but does everyone see this? This little piece that's still on there? That's part of the retina. So if you kind of start to move that to the side, you can see where the optic nerve comes, right? Because if you put your finger right where that is stuck 
and then you look at the back, there's your optic nerve. So they're attached. That's really cool. Okay, so the retina contains the photoreceptor cells that collect the light entering through the eyes, through the lens from the outside world. So remember before we were talking about the rods and cones, that's all in the retina in the back. Um, so when the light comes in through your retina, there's, the images are sent to the optic disc, which is the spot where the optic nerve attaches to the eye. And then um, the nerve sends images to the brain. So actually in the very center of that optic disc and, and nerve, there's a blind spot where there's no rods or cones. Um, and no images can be formed there. So in order to compensate for the blind spot, the eye sees, the other eye will see images. The eyes are so cool. They like see images in like six different ways and flip them around and do all kinds of things to try to make up for that blind spot, which is really interesting. Um, so the brain kind of fills in the blind spot using other information from like different visual fields. Um, So most of the retina is not attached to the eye, but it is held in place by fluids in the eye. So that vitreous humor. And then this stuff that's like right there at the start of the optic nerve, that's called the choroid coat. Are people able to kind of get to just the retina and choroid coats area? It's not much to see. It's just like you can tell that it's being pulled by the optic nerve. And that's when you know you're in the right spot. So it's not directly in the center. It could be a little bit off to the side of the eye. I'm guessing that the eyeball was probably in the head like this. Okay, so this is the only place where the retina is attached to the eye. So it's actually very easy to detach your retina from your eye and it's super, super painful and dangerous. Um, if a retinal detachment is a medical emergency, you have to go straight into the hospital and the ophthalmologist has to try to address that immediately. Otherwise you could permanently lose your vision. Um, another name for the choroid coat is the vascular tunic because it supplies the eye with blood and nutrients. So in the human eye, the choroid coat is very darkly colored to minimize the reflection of light, which could, be distort which could cause distorted images. Here, it's not that dark. Um, it's very colorful actually and shiny. See how pretty it is? It's like blue. So the choroid coat in the cow eye is different. It's really pretty. And that is called tapetum lucidum, which is a reflective property which allows the cow to see at night because it reflects the light that is absorbed through the retina back into the retina. That's interesting. So that must be like a little adaptation that cows have to be safe at night. So this allows cows to see better at night than humans can, but it distorts the clarity of what cows see because the light is reflected so much. The tapetum lucidum is also responsible for the glowing eyes of animals, such as cats, when a small amount of light reflects off the tapetum lucidum in an otherwise dark room. Oh my gosh, that's really interesting. So for anyone who has a pet and you wake up in the middle of the night and you see your pet and their eyes look like two green orbs, like they almost look like they're possessed, that's the tapetum lucidum in the back of their eye reflecting all of the light. Whereas humans don't have that, ours is clear. But in animals, it's like colorful and that's why their reflection is colorful and their eyes glow at night. That's really interesting. Okay, so that is most of the things that we wanted to do with our dissection. Does anyone have any questions or anything that they wanna ask? I think this, holding this over the Instruction. So cool. Yes. I think all of this is very interesting. Like I don't like I can I have a strong stomach, so none of this really bothered me, but it was just like so cool to see inside of another eye, you know? Yes, this was really, really cool. I'm very impressed, especially because it was a home kit, so it was really neat to see all of this. Yeah, it was. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you all for coming on. This was really exciting for me too. <laughs> But it's just so interesting because, like, I, um, I'm just like so lost in the fact that, like, we really just cut open a cow eyeball. Like, it's so interesting, but it's also so like surreal, you know.
Yes, that's so true. And that's such a great attitude to have. It's so important to be like, oh my gosh, like I feel like pretty humbled by this because this is really cool to be able to see something that's so complex and be able to actually get your fingers on it. And now, like when you learn about the eye, whether it's in high school or college, you'll have way more of an understanding of like how things connect and where they are. So that's a really cool. Great point. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, it was awesome to do this with all of you. So I would say what I'm going to do to clean mine up, I'm just, so I will normally in, when you're in the hospital, if any of you end up working in healthcare, you do not recap sharps. You just throw them in the sharp container and throw them out. In this situation, you can go ahead and put the cap very carefully back on your scalpel, okay? Very carefully. And then your uh, little scissors, you can just close up. These scissors, I'm going to throw mine away. If you want to keep it, you could. You could, like, put it in the dishwasher. But um, I would probably just go ahead and throw them away. I don't know what else you really would use these for. And now that they've been in this eye and stuff, that's kind of yucky. Um, so I would just put all of this on one tray. My, I ripped my bag a little bit, so I'm gonna get a different garbage bag, but I'm gonna put all of it in a garbage bag, tie it up tight, and throw it straight out in the garbage. I wouldn't keep any of this stuff. It's kind of yucky. Um, this little lens, though, to do the magnifying is really cool, but please are, you know, be very careful about keeping any of it because there is formaldehyde on this, which is very bad for your skin and your eyes and like your mouth, anything like that. So really be really careful. I don't want you to touch it and then accidentally touch your eyes and forget that it could hurt you. So I would wrap all this up, throw it in the garbage, and then go wash your hands really, really good with warm soapy water, okay? So does anyone have any other questions about like healthcare careers or other kind of dissections or any other science stuff like that? I actually have a question. Sure. So, like, I want to work into the, I want to work in the health field. Uh huh. But I, but I was also thinking about like forensics and like with forensics, do you need to take a law class or like criminal law or anything like that? Criminal justice. That is a great question. I don't actually know, but I do think that they do a lot of science classes. I don't know about the law aspect of it. Um, yeah, I, I would be interested in like being like uh, helping detectives like out like murders and stuff like that and like working in the morgue and all that and so like for me i don't know if i need to take law classes like i don't it's not a problem i was just wondering if you knew that is such a great question i don't actually know the answer to that but we can definitely look into it and get you an answer i feel like i feel like it couldn't hurt if you had some knowledge of of the system but i'm not sure if you have to have them so that's a good question. We should, we'll, we'll try to figure that out and get back to you. But that sounds like a very cool career and definitely one where it'd be really exciting. Yeah, it was definitely something I was thinking about. So thank you for, uh, you said you were going to look into that. So thank you. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else have anything? Okay, well, it was so awesome working with all of you. I'm very, very impressed. Um, that y'all logged on on a weekend day and did this. That's awesome. So um, pat yourselves on the back for being very dedicated to learning and pursuing these like other opportunities outside of school. That's so awesome. And that's the kind of attitude that's really going to, uh, you know, nurture your success in the future. So I'm very, very impressed with all of you. And it was great to have this session with you. If you have any more questions after this class is over, you can email me. I'm going to put my email in the chat, okay? Um, let me see. How do I do that? Oh, gosh. I don't know if it'll let me. I'll just go ahead and say my email. It's m-a-c-k-a-r-e-y-3 at gmail.com. I think a lot of you already have it from... Um, from when you got the invite to come to this session. Oh wait, here's the chat. Sorry. There you go. So you're welcome to email me and ask other questions about healthcare or any more about this dissection or anything like that, okay? 
All right. Well, have an awesome afternoon, everyone. Please make sure you wash your hands really, really well with the warm, soapy water, okay? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Okay, see you. Good see you. Stay safe. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.